Hey everybody, this is Birch. Got a little reader mail here around uh, Tim Drake. So this goes uh, DC's treatment of Tim Drake. What will it be? Tim Drake is uh, was revealed to be uh, by curious, maybe uh, or maybe just gay. Curi- may- I don't know. Curious. He's re- he was revealed to be curious in the last book. We haven't had enough story to know what form of curiosity that will take. But he was dating Stephanie Brown, and they're on a break, and so he's going to go date uh, his uh, his friend. Um, so cool. So he's curious at any rate. So, he, so that's, that's what's going on. And then they, then DC, because, um, they had this big reveal that Tim Drake is, is bisexual, I guess. Um, they decided the best way to follow up on that was to take about a three month break and then, uh, do another short story in the middle of the anthology series. That's the, that's the way you strike while the iron's hot. So that's what they've done. Anyway, let's see what the mail says. It says, Something I thought about recently, when you mentioned previously that a new Tim Drake solo series is in the works, what took them so long? Uh, I have heard a rumor that there's a new Tim Drake solo series in the works, but apparently they're going to take their time with that by going ahead and further exploring his uh, new relationship and, and feelings and confusion in a couple more short stories sandwiched in the middle of an anthology. But apparently there's a solo series coming. But, yeah, you know, it's DC. Who knows? Anyway, the mail continues. Around this time, 10 years ago, Tim's last solo series, Red Robin, came to an end. And in that time, it seemed to me that DC hasn't really known what to do with him. Sure, they'd put him on team books like New New 52 Team Titans or the more recent Young Justice series by Bendis, but none of these series seemed to really put him to good use. Heck, if the most interesting thing you can do for the character is give him a new uniform and codename that everyone hates, Drake, that kind of says it all. I will say I did like some of what Tinian did with him on his run of Detective Comics. But why would they do this when the character of Tim Drake has a proven track record? Stupidity. Stupidity. That's the answer. Anyway, sorry. I'm I'm, I'm jumping ahead. We'll keep going. He had those three great miniseries, a solo series that ran for almost 200 issues. Yes, that is correct. (laughs) And even the Red Robin series, which I admit I have not read all of, seems to have a small but loyal fan base. It's clear the character has popularity, yet they don't want to put it to good use. Heck, I honestly thought after Urban Legends number six that they were going to announce a new solo series right then and there. Instead, it seemed like they were so busy patting themselves on the back for making him bisexual, they forgot to follow up with anything other than a few scant appearances. It just makes me have a bit of trepidation about an upcoming solo series. I think the only way that feeling could be put to ease is if Chuck Dixon was writing the character, but we all know that's never happening. Let me know if you agree or not. Once again, thanks for the videos you do. P.S. Would love to hear your interview with Chuck Dixon. Yeah, I'd like to interview Chuck Dixon, too. I'll, I'm, I'm sure I'll get around to that. That'd be great. He's got a good story to tell. By the way, some people are like, why is he saying Chuck Dixon? Is this because Chuck Dixon is a conservative? Chuck Dixon is doing stuff with Richard Meyer. Why are people saying this about Chuck Dixon? I don't know, but I, I, I will say, uh, you know, in case Chuck Dixon has written a Robin and Batman in the past, so does Bill, Bill Willingham. And so that's, that's probably why, and that run was considered a good run. Uh, these comics were, uh, were liked uh, when they came out. So I, that's probably why uh, people, uh, that, why, why that, that idea sounds appealing. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's because people just want to see conservative Chuck Dixon back at DC, but more likely it's the fact that he had a fairly successful run and people like to see more of it. Can't, can't argue with that. Um, so... You know, I, I mean, what's the way to answer this question other than dumb, uh, poor planning? I mean, I, I do agree with you. It's painful, and painful is the, the right word, when they go through the trouble to reveal this new aspect to Tim Drake. They're going to make him bisexual. Um, I, I, in the grand scheme of, of handling these things badly, uh, they didn't do the worst job. I think his friendship uh, with the new relationship, uh, ship, uh, yeah, new relationship he's in was a bit retconned. That wasn't the characters are acting differently. They've they basically got to juggle the idea of both characters being bi because you know both both of these existing characters had previous uh, you know female relationships. That's fine. Bitches be crazy, so you know you, you go go to men. But um, it's. Uh, you know, it's it wasn't Bendis, Iceman, Jean Grey telling him he's gay by reading his mind bad. I mean, it could have been that bad. There's been worse. But the 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 worst part of it has been just the general planning and follow because it's hard not to look at this entire situation and think, 
nobody really knew what was going on. This story, I mean, it, when you read it, and then you see how they rolled it out, which was clumsy, and then you see how they marketed and promoted it, which was really not at all, and then you see three weeks later they uh, break that John Kent is bisexual on coming out day, when they had just done a story with Tim Drake that would have been very easily, you know, could have slid right in there, been very, very effective. Um, it does make you wonder who's talking to who. And keep in mind, if you're, um, if you're listening to this going, ah, here's another one of these YouTubers hating all the queer characters. No, I, I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I hate the fact that it seems like nobody's coordinating with each other to, you know, actually make these things matter. I think that Tim Drake uh, coming out is a big deal. I think that you could make it that into an interesting, you know, springboard for the character. Um, I, I maintain what I've said in other places before. The story has to have more of a story than just Tim's by curious. It needs, there needs to actually be a story there. I think that um, one of the things you could do if you're an effective writer is to say, you know, Tim Drake has been struggling for the last eight years. We haven't really known what to do with him. He's wandered back and forth between, you know, appearances. But, but you know, kind of lean into the idea that DC has maybe not really known what to do with this character as a reflection to the character himself of being feeling kind of lost, feeling like he doesn't really fit in, feeling like he's not really sure about his identity. And then that leads into, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I am bi. Maybe I want to explore that. I mean, you could, you could make a story out of that. You could make it a whole not campaign, but you could, you could have it be something and you could have, you know, basically a comic going, I'm Tim Drake. Um, I'm a, I'm a middle Robin. I wasn't the uh, first Robin. I wasn't the violent Robin. I wasn't the prodigy of uh, Bruce Wayne Robin. Um, I'm the, I'm the one kind of stuck in the middle there. I'm the awkward, weird one that, uh, you know, is smart, maybe a good detective, uh, you know, just, just the, the more intelligent one, but I, I don't really have a, as much of an identity. Now he does, obviously he has 200 plus comics and other things. So he has a defined identity to himself, but I mean, you could lean into that by going, I, I don't wear, I don't know where I fit in the DC universe. So, you know, I'm trying this new relationship. I'm going to travel the world and try and, you know, tackle evil in my own way. Maybe I have a different way of doing it. I mean, there's Brian Edward Hill did some interesting stuff. I thought he did some, maybe it wasn't Brian Hill actually. Now I'm, I'm rethinking it. I, I thought Brian Hill did some interesting stuff with the character. But around that run, uh, there's been some some unique takes of Tim Drake and what Tim Drake can do. And I think that you, there's plenty of material to go with there. But for DC, I think you've got to commit to that. And I, I don't know if they're going to put out a comic. I'd almost say they shouldn't at this point. Because right now, DC is kind of randomly throwing comics out the door in these kind of weirdly numbered miniseries. And I, I mean, who's going to remember any of this stuff? Right now, you've got the uh, the Becoming Aquaman series, which is the Jackson Hyde Aquaman. And forget about the fact that he's gay. Is anybody going to remember that series in two years? Will it matter at all? Because, you know, and, and I feel for some of the writers here, many of them are trying to put out good stories, but you're competing with just a, you know, random blitzkrieg of... Uh, of stories of comics. Like here's, here's one about here, you know, here's some green arrow teamed up with Aquaman stuff. And over here we've got, you know, a different multiversal version of Batman. And here he is Batman over in Europe. And over here we've got Harley Quinn, but what if she was a robot? And over here we've got, uh, I don't know, Captain Carrot. Fuck it. Let's give him a title and have that go for a while. And here's justice league multiverse you know, that, that has some other characters in it that maybe it matters. And Hey, we're, here's another comic that's uh, building off of the movie back in the eighties for Superman. I mean, it's been fun, but I mean, we, like what is even going on? How much of this stuff is going to get remembered as, as mattering the, uh, the death metal tagline that always worry me is like, now everything matters. If everything matters in this way, nothing matters. And I think that's that's where we currently sit. What what matters exactly? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, there is it, it. It's kind of all over the place. And so if you throw a Tim Drake solo book in there now, I mean, I, I don't know. Is anybody going to know it? Remember it? Is it? Is, does it have any chance of actually gaining an audience? Because I do think the, the the writer here is correct. I think there is a fan base for Tim Drake. He had a long solo series. I think he's got 
a lot going for him. I think you can do a lot with that character, but just, you know, in this current DC environment, I don't know how that character stands out. I guess I'll throw the question to all of you. Would you buy a Tim Drake solo Robin book right now in 2021, 2022, whenever you're listening to this, would you buy it? Does this, how does it stand out? And again, I, I, you kind of have a ominous feeling about it because the biggest kind of status quo moment change thing they've done for the character was this, you know, reveal that he's bi curious and he's going to, you know, pursue a, a same sex relationship has been the, the biggest thing they've, they've done with the character in, in a while. And even that they kind of hid inside of an anthology book as the middle story. They, then very rapidly shifted the attention over to John Kent. And so does this give you a lot of confidence that anything Tim Drake related is actually going to, you know, be good or be thoughtful or matter? It doesn't to me. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think people should be absolutely skeptical of where this is going because it doesn't, if the, if it doesn't feel like the company cares, why should the customers care? And right now, I mean, DC kind of needs to convince us, yeah, we do care about this character. We actually want to do something intriguing with him. Um, it's, I, I talked to somebody at DC uh, a while back, like six months ago. And I say, you know, there, there's a worry that uh, you're, you know, that DC is very apathetic to the characters. And I got the answer, well, that couldn't be farthest from the truth. And I, my, I'm thinking, I didn't say this out loud, but I'm thinking, Cool. I'm, I'm glad that couldn't be farthest from the truth. That is what you're projecting. That, that is what it feels like. Now, you can sit there and go, well, that's not what I think. Cool. That's the impression you're giving off. That's the vibe you're giving off. That's how it feels to people. Um, you know, we, we can argue that what people feel is wrong all you want. You can do that until you're blue in the face. But, you know, you got to show people that they're wrong, not just tell them they're wrong. You don't get anywhere with that. And I think that that's a, a, a challenge that, you know, both big companies have right now is your customer fa- your customer base feels like you don't care. Um, you, I'm sure you do care. You work for the company, you, you, you care, but your customer base isn't feeling it. How do you get them to feel it? Screaming at them, you have to, it, it, that, that's going to do dick all. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.